I live, I'm from the old Sinai, I'm a, I'm a Palestinian. I really hated the Jews for so long. And uh, I went uh, to study my BA in psychology, and I was looking for what happens in my life. But to make a long story short, I met with Jesus, and he changed my life. When you say you met Jesus, what happened? Yeah, I can't share what happened. Well, why not? It's, I think that would be... No, but did you actually physically see Jesus? No, I'm sorry. Uh, it was a very spiritual experience. Okay. Well, thank you for that. I, uh, I basically, for two years, I, I searched for, you know, as I said, happiness. And, uh, of course, I had hate for the Jews. Sorry to mention, no offense. Who would, who would be offended that you hate the Jews? I mean, that's... I think you're being overly sensitive here. <laughs> yeah, I think you're pushing it too much. You really be it's okay, hate the Jews, that's cool, you know, it's like <laughs> join the club. You're 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 amongst good company there. Go ahead. But, uh, of course I said this because you know, I lived here and I used to go to that man all the time and suffered a lot of check forms, how it was etc. Anyway, uh, I went through hell going through Ben Gurion getting in here with my dive equipment, by the way. And I tell you, to this minute, I just can't get myself up to the Temple Mountain and pray there because I'm told that only Muslims can go up there. So it's a rough life for everyone. Yeah, go ahead. So I asked God for uh, this happiness. Right. Searching for it. And I told him if he truly exists, I want, I want to know. Right. But I, I have a question where am I going after death? So it's kind of asking him to reveal himself. Humbly, and I really told them, please tell me what I'm wrong. Because if there is hell, I don't want to go there, you know? Hey. So I, uh, I went to a spiritual concert two days after, and then the speaker finished what he had to say, and he said, Whoever wants to taste the love of God, whoever wants to know God, just step forward, come forward, you know? <coughs> I suddenly I started going forward, and suddenly I started crying, crying, crying. It affected you deeply? I will tell you. Did it, did it have, a, 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 was it important, was it a very important experience for you? Yeah, it was, a, yeah. Very powerful. Okay, good. And then I started crying. It was the first time in my life that I was crying, not because I'm sad. It was a different type of tears in my, in my life. And suddenly I started shouting, you know, in front of people. It was very embarrassing, very weird. And I, I was not in control, but I was very conscious of what's happening to me. And suddenly I fell on the floor, you know, and tears were in my eyes really, really much. And as I said, it's embarrassing. However, I didn't, I, it wasn't my, my focus at that point. And for the first time in my life, as I was on the floor, I felt the love of God touching my heart and my soul. At that point, the happiness I was looking for, I felt it for the first time in my life. Now, how I met Jesus is... I, you remember I asked God where I'm going after that, right? I want you to all please give this man the respect he deserves and pay careful attention to what he's saying. Yeah. Continue. Thank you. Thank you. And then as, uh, 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 this answer I was looking. So now I have happiness, but I, I want the second answer where I'm going after that. And you know, uh, while, while I'm on the floor... I'm and I'm not trying to quicken you. I just want to sort of say, and what happened? I'm saying I heard in my... I mean, it's in, I would say it's in a uh, uh, voice. Uh, not like audible voice from outside of the No, not... Um, in an internal voice. Yeah. Internal voice. Telling you that what? Yeah, telling me, when you die... I'm taking you to heaven. But what you're saying is that you've had, you were raised, you're, you're an Arab, and, right? And you, I imagine, were raised in the Islamic religion. Is that correct? No, you were always a Christian, but you were sort of not a very, not, not, a, not even, you were just like a nothing. All right, but then what happens is you have this personal experience, and in this personal experience, this, it's almost miraculous what happened to you, that God spoke to you in your heart and revealed to you that Jesus is the Messiah who is going to bring you to heaven. And this was a transitional moment in your life. It changed your worldview and the way you see the world, the way perhaps you see the Jews, the way you see God's gift of this land to the Jewish people has changed now and you can imagine that's going to be for a very long time. And you're asking me, well, how could this all happen if Jesus is not the Messiah? And that's your question you're asking me. What's your first name? 
What's your social security number? I'm joking. <laughs> I'm kidding. That was a joke. Okay. Okay. He, he asked this, this, and just your visa number, what do you hope? Visa card number. This is, in fact, a very important question. Because, God, I've encountered this, and this is very important. This is valuable. And what, what he is saying is in that he's had this an experience that was obviously very spiritual. It wasn't an objective miracle. We had heard an audible voice, but it was something that was deeply moving, so moving that it changed it in the way you look at yourself, your relationship with God, and so many other things. And you're saying, therefore, would this not point me in the truth? Can't, Jesus, therefore, must be the Messiah. Or it seems this anecdote, which is very powerful to you, obviously seems to point me in a certain direction. What am I to make of this personal experience that I've had and that many other people have had? I understand your question. I thank you for having the courage to raise that here because obviously you were sharing something that was deeply personal. I met with a young man who had, it was very much like what you described. Not exactly the same. He was laying on a bed and he was in tremendous despair. He wasn't really in the best time of his life. And he just said, you know, if you're real, you know, would you raise me up, lift me up from the bed? And it happened miraculously, where he felt his body lift up. And like you, he said, I don't know if there was a camera there, it would have seen, you know, if it would have filmed that, but I surely felt that, okay? And it was for him very, very powerful. That's why when you said it, I was important to me. There is one difference, not just that he wasn't an Arab, he was an American Jew, but the other difference is that it was he was praying to Hare Krishna. And through, it was through Hare Krishna that he had this very powerful experience. And in fact, we find among Sufi Muslims, we find these very powerful miracles of people in Lourdes who, who encountered the Virgin Mary and so on. This, my friend, Habibi, is the most disorganized arena in organized religion. Because as it turns out, we find people just like you in every religion that believe that God has spoken to them personally and changed their lives, and you... Uh, describe that it wasn't really an audio auditory voice. There are many Jews who have adopted religions where they actually hear Mary speaking to them and appearing to them and so on. So we have this, this creates a conundrum. And the conundrum is that the, every single religion, for, including Islam, produces people that believe without any doubt that God came to them, whether it was the name of Muhammad, whether Jesus came to them, whether it was a Hindu deity that came to them, whether it was Joseph Smith, the founder of the Mormon religion. We find this in every single religion, and they can't all be the truth. This conundrum is addressed in the Torah, the Torah. In Deuteronomy 13, Hashem knows that this is going to happen. And in fact, we find in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 8 and 9, Jeremiah addresses this as well. We might say that some of these people, these religions, not you, but many of these people, these religions are hokey, or they're not well, and so on. But some of them clearly are serious people who are having these experiences in religions. And all, let's be honest, let's be frank with each other, they can't all be true. He either is or he isn't. Hare Krishna could be who Hinduism says he is or he isn't. And the, I remember a kid who was on 17 in upstate New York, and he ran out of gasoline going up to the Catskill Mountains, which is the Jewish Rockies. And he said, if Hare Krishna, if you're real, let my car start. And lo and behold, it did. Does that mean that I should convert now and become a Hindu? I should follow Hare Krishna and shave my head off? Jeremiah is confronted with exactly that conundrum. In the days of Jeremiah, it's the end of the first temple period, there were many prophets who accused Jeremiah of being a false prophet. Jeremiah was in telling the people, do not fight against Babylon because God is not with you. 
But there were other prophets. I mean, they probably just religious Jews who, who said, no, let's go and fight against Nebuchadnezzar. Let's fight against Babylon. And Jeremiah says, don't listen to them. These people are not speaking in the name of God. The people then come forward to Jeremiah and says, you don't know. These prophets, as we're sleeping, as we're laying in our bed, they're speaking to us. We hear them. And in Jeremiah 29, verse 8 and 9, the prophet says there, do not listen to these dreams, the dreams that you're being caused to dream, because you yourself are bringing it about. In fact, in Deuteronomy 13, we're told a much stronger case than you are. Not, God forbid, to put you down. I appreciate it must have taken an enormous amount of courage for you to express yourself tonight. But in Deuteronomy 13, we're told that what happens if a person comes and says that I'm a prophet and then performs miracles, that means empirical miracles, signs and wonders, but he teaches you to follow gods that your fathers did not know, or don't follow the commandments. And not only that, the miracles and the signs that he tells you come to pass just as he told you. He's able to actually perform miracles. Hashem says this. Hashem says, do not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer of dreams, for I have not sent him. This creates an enormous conundrum. Why would God permit false religions to produce spiritual experiences? And, and you, certainly, even though you weren't a Muslim or you weren't a Christian beforehand, you know how many Muslims will give their life what they believe and believe that God, that Allah speaks to them. So you know this. You know that I'm, this is, I'm not creating a straw man. And what the text says, Hashem explains why he allows other religions to produce these spiritual experiences. And the words are, I... I'm only testing you to see if you truly love me. So therefore, I want to concede this point to you as a Jew, who you no longer hate. You're now facing the conundrum of God is testing you and saying, what are you going to choose? We have a Torah, a Tanakh on one hand, that's telling us how to live our lives. And we have, on the other hand, people of every religion, we all can see that, who are all having these miraculous, fantastic, you know, the, the, you know, whole blood coming out of the middle of their hands and all that kind of stuff. You know, in all the, every, there isn't a religion that's not producing people. So many young black men in America become Muslims and stop using drugs and stop using alcohol and their lives are changed as a result of their conversion to Islam. It happens constantly. So what the Torah is saying is that, and this is what we believe as Jews, and I want you to know this because I'm going to be straight with you. We believe that if we have on the one hand a person who is saying, I've had a miraculous experience to me, and I have the Torah on the other hand that's conveying a different message, and I have to choose between the two, I've got to go with the Bible. Do you follow what I'm saying? Now, why would God permit other religions? Judaism also has produced life-changing experiences in my life. I wasn't always standing here like this. I was in another place. But why would God be producing it in all other religions? Why would he allow such a thing? Imagine the reciprocal. Imagine the opposite would happen. Imagine if, for example, sweetheart, the only Judaism produced miraculous or spiritual experiences. There would be no free will in the world. Virtue would become impossible. And therefore, even Pharaoh, you read Book of Exodus, his magicians were able to duplicate what Moses did by throwing down a snake, or what actually Aaron did, throwing down a stick, and that stick turning into a snake. And therefore, I'm going to say this to you straight ahead so you know, because I want to be right on the level with you. And that is, if I have to choose between your subjective experience, and I'm not using the word subjective as a pejorative to put it down in any way, but, and that, I'm going with that. The Torah was given at a national revelation to the whole people, and therefore you cannot have a personal subjective experience, which is what you've had, and say, well, override that. There are Muslims, you probably have cousins, who are living here in the land of Israel, who, who are Muslims, who have had spiritual experience as Muslims as well. So what do we do? They all can't be right. Muhammad either was a prophet or not a prophet. People, Muslims, clearly are having spiritual experiences that he was. We don't follow the dreamer of dreams. We don't follow these experiences. 
we follow the Bible. It is the Bible that is our only barometer for truth.